انك لا تهدي من احببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله welcome to the young smokes podcast and we're here with brother abdurrahman hussein السلام عليكم شيخ السلام ورحمه الله دونا هاي ده الحمد لله من هاي ده من نيجر Happy to have you in Ottawa, man. No, I'm happy to be here, bro. This was supposed to happen back in Medina, bro. Yeah, on Hajj, right? Just after, after Hajj. Hajj, but subhanAllah, Allah will did that. We're going to link up in my city, man. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm happy to be here, bro. Zakallah khair, man. So, and thanks for helping me with my uh, projects and Allah stuff. Allah yabarifik, man. No problem. Allah yabarifik. No, I was really happy with the turnout today. Yeah, subhanAllah. And it, it, it worked out that it was just like, it happened so quick, man. Yeah. I got the message on Thursday and the brothers over there, yes, the MSA uh, brothers made it happen. So, alhamdulillah. The yeah. turnout, you know, alhamdulillah, That's man. Good. Alhamdulillah. For those of them who are listening, we just did a, an event at the mash, at the university. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's a big turnout. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad it worked yeah, out, man. So, so, bro. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Wallah, I've been good, so man. So, you literally, you've been back in Ottawa for how many days? I came back last Wednesday. So, I'm here for a little over a week now. So, you've been back in Canada for a week. Back in cold Ottawa, man. It's minus... 10 to 20 well it's been good this weekend you came yeah. out a good weekend this weekend but last weekend uh with the wind chill it hit like minus 35 yeah especially last friday you're and coming last saturday. from medina and i came from medina you've just been in you did, how how many years were you in medina uh about a little over five and a half mashallah yeah almost six years almost so what was you doing in medina bro alhamdulillah Tell us about this story yeah i was there um alhamdulillah as a student uh, at the Islamic University of Medina, Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy that I graduated, man, from Kulia Sharia. Uh, getting to Medina was honestly a dream, bro, for me. Yeah. And um, the story was long. It was yeah. a long um, a story getting there. But Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy and I got there. So you, you're born and raised in Ottawa? I was born in Montreal. Okay. I was born in Montreal and uh, I grew up in Ottawa. So I moved to Ottawa when I was... About a year yeah. old, so I don't, I really don't speak French. Yeah. But I was born in Montreal and I grew up here in Ottawa. So most of my life, most of my life, I was in Ottawa. So what was it like growing up in Ottawa? Well, it was nice, man. You know, for me, I came from a family background that was very religious. Yeah. Uh, my parents, my mother, my father, uh, made it a point to establish, you know, a household that was really Islamic, mm. and uh, you know, they were people that were involved in studying the Deen and and da'wah as well. My father himself is a graduate from the Islamic University in Pakistan. In Islamabad, Sharia as well. So, and my mother also, you know, she was somebody that put a lot of importance to, you know, us growing up as an Islamic family. So, yeah. we were in a household that was very Islamic to begin with. Mashallah. So, for, for me, growing up, it was like, those things were very normalized almost. Sometimes yeah. when, you, when you grow up in a certain situation, you don't really understand the blessing that you're in because for you it's just a normal thing. Fine, like it was very normal for, you know, for my dad, you know, his friends being people that were giving da'wah, he himself being involved in the city, yeah. giving da'wah and teaching. And it so was, that was just reality was, for you. It was just a reality for me. So it, it was not until I got older that I understood the significance of, of that particular situation, right? You know, he, he himself being somebody who's a student, a lot of books in the house. So it was something that was very normal, like I said, growing up. Uh, and you, your mom's a teacher as well, right? She and teaches. my mom, yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. she's also been teaching for, for quite some time now, alhamdulillah, Mashallah, in the city, Mashallah. primarily for the sisters, Mashallah. alhamdulillah. So uh, Allah has blessed me, you know, you don't really choose your parents, man. That's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for you. So it's a ni'mah from Allah that Allah, and it's a blessing that He put me in that, put me in that situation and chose mm. them to be my parents. So I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. So, you know, and they really worked hard, man. It's not really easy kind of making that environment happen. Yeah. Especially living out here in the West. It's very yeah. difficult. It's a, very, it's a challenge. So how, how, how did they bring, raise you, bro? Like, how, what was their techniques, you know, for raising, you know, practicing Muslim children in the yeah. West? You know, you know, how, I, what, you know what, what did you go out? Did you do sports? What? I mean, what, yeah, what we, def like? we, we definitely, yeah. we definitely, um, there was a, there was definitely a really good balance between, you know, them establishing the parameters of, of what we do, but at the same time, kind of like entertaining us and allowing us, giving us that, those opportunities and those avenues to actually, 
you know, to have fun. So they've, they've established it. Alhamdulillah, one of the things was they kind of knew what was going on. Mm. So uh, they, were, they were plugged in. You know, they, they, yeah. they understood the challenge that was ahead of them. And it was by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawfiq really and it's, you know, giving them yeah. that understanding to kind of understand the responsibilities ahead mm. of them. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult for me to put it to words. I just got to yeah. reflect based on yeah. what happened growing up. You know, yeah. I, I really didn't come up with a formula of exactly what yeah. they did, but just based on experiences, they really knew what they were doing. You know, like they, 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 alhamdulillah, and that's something that Allah blessed them with. That Subhan, I need, I need they your kept... parents. I need your parents on a podcast. <laughs> as well. Subhan, you, you know, this is. I think this is what we're lacking in the West. Yeah, it's it's practical examples of how to do it in the West. Yeah, how to raise our ch children in that environment. You know, you got the, you got, you're balancing the challenges. Yeah, you got man. to entertain them. Yep. You know, in a certain ways and. And I'm even myself still, you know, I'm, I'm a father myself now and I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, yeah. like I'm thinking back, you know, how they did it. And I even told my dad one time before I came back, I messaged him saying, you know, like, I got to sit down with you and just, like, and just, you know, pick your brains as how yeah. you did it, you know? It, yes, I lived it. Yeah. But it's different than, it's, it's, it's different than now mm. looking at my two children and saying, oh, you know, this is a challenge that's in front of me now. So I got to yeah. kind of. And of course it would have changed. Yeah. In that time as well, you know, yeah. 20, 20, 20 years on. Yeah, you know, that's it's like true. It adapts slightly, but you can still take the lessons from, from what they did. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is the, the experience. Experience trumps everything, man. Yeah, experience trumps oh. everything. So, so when when did you, like, decide that you want to be a student of knowledge? That you you know that you you're gonna go and study. I think the uh, it was probably towards the end of my high school, towards the end. Hmm. I had an idea, so you have to understand, like, grow, again, growing up, these things were very normal. Like, I remember, uh, I remember, uh, I think when I was starting high school in grade 9, before even starting high school, we used to learn Qur'an at home. Mm. Like, we used to go to the traditional duksi, you know, where we memorize Qur'an and whatnot, but at one point in time, my father made the conscious decision, my parents both made the decision that we're going to do this at home. Mm. So, uh, from as early as I was in, like, middle school, we were doing Qur'an at home. Saturday morning, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, after Fajr was kind of like Qur'an time for myself and my younger brothers and my sister. So we were doing that at home. And I remember early on, he started introducing me to certain books. Mm. I remember the first book he made me memorize, he, told, he gave me a poem. It was a poem on the science of Hadith, mm. Bayquniyya. And he told me, memorize this. Mm. I really didn't know what it was. Like, what is this? Just memorize it. Every Saturday, do, do two lines, Sunday two lines, until I finished it. So I was doing it, you know, just in obedience to my dad. I didn't really understand its importance, but I knew it was something that was, that just needed to be, I just felt like it needed to get done because he was telling me to do it. And he also, he, was, he, started, he started teaching me a book in Arabic grammar and Ajrumiya. At that time, I think I was in like ninth grade. Basic, you yeah. know, just breaking it to me, introducing it to me. I guess he understood my level at that time. Looking back, I, I just feel that way. So, and I was doing it just for the sake of doing it. I mean, my friends weren't doing it at that time, at least. So, but later on, slowly, as I grew old, older, I realized its importance. Yeah. So what happened was, during those times in high school, my life was mainly at home or the activities that our parents would take us to, basketball or soccer or karate or whatever it was. Uh, so I remember, and this is a kind of a side story, uh, there were some brothers that used to do this da'wah initiatives for youth in the city. Mm. So, uh, and they used to do like these monthly events, youth, mm. you know, high school khutbas, mm. good brothers, they used to do some good da'wah work, especially for the youth at that time. And I found that to be interesting, mm. kind of like, wow, like these dudes are doing some, these brothers are doing some good stuff. And uh, I remember one of them, uh, one time came to me at the masjid at that time and told me, hey, tomorrow morning we're going to be meeting up with some brothers, mm. uh, we're doing some Fajr ball program. This is probably back in 2005, I would say. Roughly. I said, Fajr ball. All right. I told my dad, you know, these guys are going to be doing Fajr. And after Fajr, they're going to do a halaqa and basketball. And my dad's like, all right, go check it out. And my dad, as a side note, always had this policy that whenever I would go to these Islamic events, he'd always ask me after the event, all right, what did you learn? That's, what's, what's new that you learned today? You know, yeah. is there something that, you know, that you went there that you didn't know? Um, because cause he's teaching us at home. Yeah, so he was yeah. kind of instilling in me that most of these places that you're going to, I c you can get it for free at home too, yeah, kind of yeah, thing, you know? Yeah. 
So I remember I went to that particular event and uh, at that event, the brother kind of introduced me, hey, we have a group of brothers, you know, we, we do like youth da'wah in the city, youth yeah. events. They were plugged in with the high school khutbas at that time. The high schools in the city yeah. used to have khutbas and there was brothers that used to delegate it. So they kind of plugged me in at that time. I was in around 10th grade. What, uh, what age is that in Canada? I was 16. 16, yeah. 16. So I got, I, by that time, I was getting heavily involved in like, you know, just youth da'wah. Yeah. You know? So, and so you my dad. To give the khutbah at 16. So I started giving khutbahs in high schools. Mashallah. Around that time. Yeah, it was like around 16, 17, Mashallah. grade 11. So I remember my dad always emphasized, you know, that, hey, you know, this is nice, but this ain't gonna continue if you're not learning. Mm. Like, you can't really sustain yourself. Yeah. If you have nothing to give, kind of yeah. thing, you know? Uh, and so he would always emphasize that you gotta, you gotta learn, you know, he was, we were already putting a lot of time in the Quran and other basic things. But at that time, I still don't have that, you know, that energy of, okay, I think I should take seeking knowledge seriously. Yeah. It hadn't hit me yet, or the importance of seeking knowledge didn't hit me yet until I finished high school and I'll get to that. So we were doing this, you know, high school khutbahs. But I'm getting comfortable now with speaking in front of people. I kind of yeah. got involved in that. When I graduated from high school, we went for an Umrah trip in 2007. And uh, that Umrah trip was really, uh, it changed a lot. It, cha it gave me a lot of perspective. Because mm -hmm. when I went out there, I did have this curiosity about Medina. I was hearing about it a lot. Mm -hmm. These brothers that are coming up, graduating. Some of these speakers that were speaking that were, you know, we already knew about people like Dr. Bilal Phillips and some of the other you know, graduates mm -hmm. from, from before. But the first time I kind of took into serious account that, hey, this is something that I, I want to do, was when I went there in 07. I went to, I went to Umrah, we went to Mecca, and I, I met some brothers that were from Somalia, mm. that, uh, that were like students in Dar al-Hadith and in Mecca. Yeah. And I remember coming to the Haram, and, and I saw some of them reading the Arabic grammar that my dad used to teach me. So I asked them, what are you guys doing this for? And they're like, oh, we're studying, preparing for exams, and we're in university. And this guy said, I'm applied. I'm in Darul Hadith in Mecca, but I'm applying to Medina. And I think it was at that yeah. time, the light bulb kind of like... And you'd already, me got that. It, you'd already got it down, basically. I wouldn't say I got it down, but I had an idea of what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Like I had a sense of what was going on yeah. because I was, it was introduced to me. Yeah. But it was not something that I was passionately chasing yeah. after. Yeah. But that was the first time I was like, wow, this is, this is it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember I told myself, yeah, when I told the guy who was our tour guide, when you go to Medina, you got to take me to this university. I got to check it out. So we went to the university in 07. And uh, I remember he took us to the university and the guy's like, where's your paper? And I said, I don't know. We don't, I just finished high school like a month ago. And the guy was like, go and bring your papers. And whenever you have your papers, then apply. So that was the first time I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to do this, inshallah. That's what you want to do. So I applied the following year in 2008. That was the first time I applied in 2008. In those times, there was papers, they were, you know how it was, there was no uh, online that time. So I applied in 08, I didn't get in. I applied in 2009, I didn't get in. Uh, a third time in 2011 or 10, around there, I didn't get in. Three times I didn't get in. 2012, I came for Umrah and I did an interview for the first time. I applied, I didn't get in that time as well, so that was four times I didn't apply. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't get accepted. I applied. I didn't accept it, and it was it was it was um, it was tough, man. You know, because you really yeah. want it, you know. But yeah. Subhanallah, you know, you have your own your wishes and you have your yeah. own plans, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants better for you. Yeah. So during that time, I was in university over here. Yeah. I was in university. Uh, Allah willed that I got married. Sure. You know, at, during that time, I was already busy and involved. So you in, finished your university here. I ended up finishing here before I went. Alhamdulillah. Sure. So, a lot of wisdom from Allah. Yeah, Allah man. Really I got involved a lot in the community yeah. with da'wah, you yeah. know? Because yeah. once I transitioned into, into yeah. university, I was involved in da'wah yeah. on campus, khutbahs as well. So it's as if like, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this for me yeah. at that time. There's a lot, it was a lot of benefit even. There's a lot of, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the big, I think the biggest benefit was by the time I got to the university, I kind of knew what I wanted. I was older in age. Yeah. I had a family. Yeah. I was already kind of like, you know, in touch with what's going on on the ground. I, I, it helped me kind of stay focused when I was on campus. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. It was, a, it was a benefit overall. I didn't see it then, but you know, you want yeah. something, but Allah wants better for you. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, I'm thankful to Allah for that. So the fourth time, the fifth time, uh, a group from the university came. 
mm. to the city for something completely different. I don't know what they came for. I think there was some kind of a job fair that was happening in Ottawa for Saudi students mm. that are here. So sometimes they bring like the universities and the different ministries to do job fairs for the Saudis going back to Saudi Arabia yeah. after they finished from school, university here. So there's a group from the Jamia that came. Mm. And a brother, at that time I was working at the Islamic school that I graduated from, I was working as a teacher there at that time. So, and I used to give the khutbah once a month there. So, one brother from the embassy brought the delegation from the university to the khutbah that I was giving. I had no idea, I had no clue. I was giving the regular Friday that day, my regular uh, third Friday of the month. I gave the khutbah and after the khutbah, uh, the brother came to me. Uh, may Allah bless him. I think he's back in Saudi now. Very good brother. So he came to me and said, like, I want to introduce you to these brothers from the university. So like this guy is the vice president of the university and there's two other uh, professors. One was like an engineering professor and another guy that worked in the management of the university. So the guy was saying, yeah, you know, I know you applied and inshallah you'll get in. Tomorrow come to us at the convention center and, you know, we'll talk. So I told some of the, brother, the boys, yo, these guys are here, let's go, do, let's go check this out. Mm -hmm. So we went, you know, it was not even an interview, it was more of a discussion. They were kind yeah. of like asking me about my khutbah and mm -hmm. reflecting upon that. And the other brother did their interview. I think all the brothers that came that day there got accepted. Subhanallah. We all Subhanallah. got in that time. Subhanallah. Yeah, some of them didn't end up going for one reason or another. But most of us that went there, we got accepted, Subhanallah. And that was the fifth time I applied, man. And uh, that, was in that interview happened around the end of 2013. And 2014 was when I, came, when I went to Medina. And that was my last semester of university. Yeah, Subhanallah. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah, Subhanallah, like, it all worked out, man. I remember, I remember doing my final exams in Carleton University, and that's when my visa arrived. SubhanAllah. So I finished my final exams, my visa was ready. In about a few weeks, I left. I went to, uh, I went to Medina, man, in 2014, and, that's, and it started there. So SubhanAllah, like, you know, looking back, it was like, wow, man, SubhanAllah, how it all happened, mm. it was by Allah's permission, man. Mm. And, uh, and, and that time period I was in, I was here at home, yeah. it was a benefit because I spent time studying, yeah. you know, I spent time, you know, involved in the community, yeah. working two years as an Islamic studies teacher, that itself was its own experience yeah. because you preparing you, you and studying. The, the, the planning of it, subhanAllah, you couldn't have planned it better. I couldn't, Literally. that was not from me, Allah, man, yeah. that, just, it just, that was from Allah, Allah that was from Allah. Allah. So then I went to Medina, man, and Medina was, uh, I don't know what to say, man, Medina was definitely the best time of my life. Mm. That Everyone says that. You it know, was the best time of my life, man. All the students, yeah. It was the best time. And I started from scratch. Yeah. I said I wanted to take advantage of all. So I started from yeah. first semester of the Arabic program. I did a full two years. Mm. And then, uh, then I went into the College of Sharia. Alhamdulillah. And I just finished that now. At the end, I kind of mm. I sped the process up, took summer school and, and kind of went, you know, went a bit quick to finish a bit early. So I finished a semester early. Yeah. Technically, I'm supposed to finish Ramadan yeah. coming up. But Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy. I finished a bit early to come back. Yeah. So it was a good experience, man. Medina is a whole different experience, but it was beautiful, man. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how I got there, pretty much. SubhanAllah. That's how I got there, man. So you had a great experience for them five years. It was the best time of my life. SubhanAllah. No doubt. I mean, you, you, obviously, uh, you'd been to Umrah before. You'd yes. visited uh, Umrah, Mecca, Medina. Mm -hmm. But living in Medina, well, how is it? You know, how is it different? Because you, you lived on campus as well yeah. as off campus as well. Yes, I lived. And how, was, how different was that as an experience? Oh, that's a, yeah. Living on campus, I lived on campus for a year. And then after a year, alhamdulillah, I brought my family. I brought my wife and yeah. my son at the time. Yeah. My daughter wasn't born at that time yet. So living on campus was nice, man. That one year yeah. I lived on campus was, you're, you're living with students from all over the world, man. Places yeah. that I'll probably never go to in my life. Oh. It's just, it's just yeah, you see, you've seen it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just an interesting experience, man, living with all kinds of students, all kinds of brothers from all other places, yeah. you know, living in the same buildings and, yeah. you know, going and eating at the mat'am, at the restaurant and praying at the masjid and going to class. And, you know, it's campus life is like, it's a very interesting life. You're just living, yeah. it's like, it's the jamia is a city of its own almost. Yeah. So that, that one year for me was a nice year. I enjoyed it, you know? Yeah. You know, I, socializing with certain brothers and just, yeah. you know, I enjoyed it. I, I know yeah. it, it was a good time. Mm. And the next year that I brought my family and lived outside, it was a different experience. Mm. And it was nice because living outside, you're actually mixing with the population. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you're going, you're, locals you're, pray, yeah, you're praying at your local masjid and it's not just full of students, but it's yeah. full of the locals, people from all over the place and yeah. people asking you, where are you from and what do you, you know, most of them know that you're a student in the university. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a university city, you know, yeah. so people know that you're a student from the Jamia, where are you from and you know, and then you're seeing people from all over the world going to Umrah and uh, going haram. to Medina. The yeah, haram and, and I think that's the, going to the Haram daily. It's just you, it's like something that you, living yeah. there is a whole different experience, man. You so, know, coming for Umrah, you know, it's it's all short, mm. it's all compact. You know, especially mm. in most time now it's different. Now you can stay longer with the new visas. By that time, it's you're only there for a certain amount of time. You're stuck to a group. But living there, man, sometimes you're there during times when it's low season. The haram is empty. You just, you know, there is an entire month almost after Hajj for like a yeah. month and a half where the haram is empty. And, you know, you walk into the masjid and you pray your two rak'ahs of the masjid in the rawdah. You know, then you just, you can sit there and study or just go to the class or go yeah. read your Quran. So this, it's, it's a blessing, man. You know, yeah. you just get up and say, hey, man, you know, it's Saturday today. I want to go yeah. to Quba, you know. Yeah. So uh, you, you've also done a bit of traveling as well. Yeah. You traveled to a few different countries. Where, where have you been? Well, not too many, to be honest. I haven't yeah. been to too many countries. I've been to... Uh, but you were telling me you, you, you led the tarawih in... Uh, yeah, my first year in the... Trinidad, universe, right? Trinidad, that's right. 2014. 2014, uh, that was the f when I started the university. The funny thing yeah. was I got accepted in May, uh, in 2014, so I went in May. Yeah. And when I went into the university, it was the last month mm. of, of, of the school year. So it was literally like a umrah trip for me. I just came, got my information for mm. school, settled in. Got my room, you know, so that one month was literally, I settled into the university, went for Umrah, I had no classes, students were in exams, after exams I got my ticket, I flew back. So the month of May, until the end of May, until June, I was there, mm. just, you know, setting up. It worked, mm. that, that, even, that even worked out well for me. For mm. students, sometimes it's difficult, you know, the yeah. early transition into the Jamia, is a difficult mm. process, but Allah made it easier for me. So that one month of May, Students were literally in their final exams. I just came, settled in, got my room, did Umrah. Alhamdulillah, worked out. So when I came back to Canada in the summer break that month in June, uh, there was a sheikh in the city who's a Qari who normally leads Tarawih. He was invited to Trinidad. Hmm. But he couldn't go because at that time he didn't have his passport yet. He's still not a citizen. So I guess he spoke to my father. And uh, my father told me, hey, there's an opportunity to go to Trinidad. Why don't you uh, check it out? So I thought about it, I said, all right, you know. Mm. I was a bit hesitant at first because I just came from Medina and I'm leaving in a month and my family yeah. at that time were going to stay behind. So you would spend time with them. So I wanted to yeah. spend time, you know. So then my dad's like, well, I talked to them, maybe they can, you know, bring your wife and stuff with you. And they're actually willing to do that. Mm. But, you know, my, kid, my son at that time was six months. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know, take him to that place. Mm. I've never been there before. So I ended up going, but just by myself mm. for a month, for the month of Ramadan. And it was an experience. Trinidad was an experience, man. Beautiful place. Mm. Beautiful place. Those brothers welcomed me. Uh, the weather was beautiful. Um, the food was nice. It's just everything was, you know, it was, yeah. it was just nice, man. You know. What's the population of Muslims like there? What, what? I don't know what the number is population-wise. No, but like. But there's the a lot of Muslims, they, man. They, they, what's their background? Like? Uh, they, well, there, there is there's a lot of there's a lot of Indians. Originally, yes, like, there were also Indian Indian originally origin, right? Indians, and there's also also African Trinis. The communities that yeah. I was at were mainly African Trinis, yeah. and they were very welcoming. Man, they showed me a lot, a lot of love. You know, yeah. it was very nice. It was a very nice experience. I just loved the environment, man. In terms of, it was different, obviously, than you know, coming from Canada. Uh, it, it, it reminded me a little bit of Kenya because I've I've been there before when I was younger. Um, it was beautiful, man. I love, I'm a, I, yeah. I'm a mango guy, so they had like mango trees. So yeah. they were like, oh, you love mangoes, we're gonna hook you up. And they were bringing me like cases of mangoes yeah. from the tree. It was this nice, fresh coconut, so whatever you, you want. So you the for the whole Ramadan? The whole month, man. The whole so Ramadan. So when did you memorize Quran? What age were you? Uh, I was actually older in age. Mm. I started young. I started young, like I said earlier, we study at home with my dad and stuff like that. And when I got, when I, by the time I finished high school, I was almost finished the Quran. Mm. I was probably I had probably like maybe five chapters of that left. Mm. I was almost done, but I slowed down once I got into high school, university. And I remember mm. my dad gave me advice. One of the one of the things I regret um, not listening to him for was he told me once just take a, he told me he advised me to take a year off school before starting university and finish the Quran. Mm. And I don't know. I just I just I said nah, man. Everyone's going to university. I gotta go to university. And so I ended up finishing after. So mm. I ended up finishing. 
when I, when I, by the time I came to Medina, yeah. I had like, I think I had like only Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran left yeah. to memorize. So I finished that early on in my first year uh, yeah. uh, when I was living on campus. I, yeah. I finished that, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So, but I, obviously I was reviewing and yeah. so when I was in Trinidad, yeah, I, I was not fully half it, but I was almost there. Yeah, mashallah. I was almost there, alhamdulillah. So I just led with what I knew, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. So, being back in Ottawa now yeah. for one week, yeah, minus twenty degrees, minus thirty. How is it? I mean, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still trying to find my bearings, man. Yeah. But it's been nice coming back mm. to family, you know, the community, people, seeing people, welcoming you back, congratulating you. Yeah, it's a nice feeling to be back. Mm. You know, the weather is 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 brutal, yeah. but it's getting a little bit better. Alhamdulillah. So, what's your plan for Dawa? What's your plan for, you know, now now you've You've graduated, mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've uh, studied Islam, you've studied Sharia. Mm -hmm. How are you going to implement this in, and how are you going to support the community with this? Yeah, being, for, for me being back, I think there's two things that I've told myself that I want to focus on. Uh, number one is da'wah and number two is continuing uh, the studies. Mm. Because, you know, coming back, for, the university was really like... It was a start, man. It, it gave me the tools that I need to continue. Mm. Like this, like I'm, I'm literally it's not starting. the end for you. Nah, it's the beginning, brother. Yeah, it's the beginning. But the jami, I kind of it helped, it, and being in Medina and studying with the scholars there, it kind of gives you the, the, it, 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 the tools and kind of the system that mm. you need now to kind of like take it to the next level. Mm. So I think early on, one of my goals early on is to kind of establish for myself a system to. Kind of continue studying again. It's a great, it's a ni'mah and a blessing from Allah that, you know, even when I used to come back in the summers, I used to take time mm. to kind of study and review with my dad. Yeah. So that's a blessing that I had that a lot of brothers probably uh, didn't necessarily have. Yeah. So he's, so that's something that I plan to continue doing. As for da'wah, I mean, that's something that you just gotta give back, man. I mean, you know, mm. the khair that Allah subhanahu wa taala has blessed us with, you gotta try yeah. and help out the community and give back with. So as of now, uh, I'm established out of a center that. Uh, my mother, may Allah bless her, she just opened up mm -hmm. not too long ago. I was talking to you about it earlier. Uh, she, alhamdulillah, has been doing classes primarily for sisters uh, for the past, I would say, 11, 12 years, if not more. Sure. A lot of it was based out of our house and some of the centers and the masajid mm -hmm. in the city. So now she, you know, the demand was high for her to kind of open up a small mm -hmm. place for herself. And she's been doing a lot of, you know, good stuff out of there for the last about, I would say about a year. It's while, it's while I've been in Medina, so I made the promise to her that when I come back, I'm gonna kind of you know establish myself and kind of get this going with you and kind of do programs, mm. especially for young brothers. They need a lot of assistance from the angle of just Islamic education. I think mm. that's something that is really uh, that is crucial, especially the time that we're in now, uh, educating and just giving some ground roots foundation about mm. understanding Islam at a basic level. Yeah. We have a lot of, alhamdulillah, people that are memorizing the Qur'an mm. or going to Qur'an schools, but we, we were lacking the aspect of giving them that understanding and mm. just connecting them yeah. to uh, understanding their religion and connecting themselves to Allah and connecting themselves to Islam and applying Islam, especially living at the time that we're living in now in the West and the challenges that exist mm. now. So I, right now I'm established out of there. It's been a week, obviously, so I'm still yeah, yeah. Uh, working on things, but I'm going to primarily be based out of there. And I'm open generally to kind of like working on the ground. Uh, I've been in contact with a lot of the univer some of the university brothers uh, on both campuses. So I really want to kind of get things going, helping out, you know, the da'wah on, on the university uh, campuses, inshallah. Sure. And just in general with the community, whatever help that's kind of needed to whatever time I'm able to kind of give back. By, by Allah's permission to just do what I can, man. I mean, Mashallah. we can't do everything, subhanAllah. Sure, like, sure, the yeah. demand is really high and, uh, and uh, the people are, are very few that can give. So we just, we can only do what we can. You know, we're not Superman at the end One of the day. One thing I've seen with you is a, a lot of the young brothers, they really look up to you, man, especially the Somali community. You know, they really, they, they know you and, yeah. uh, they, you know, they're really inspired. You know, they obviously, they know your family as well. You know, a prominent family in the community as well, and uh, you know, Subhanallah, they they they're really happy to see that you've returned. You know, I mean, I was I was with one of the brothers, and he was he was like, we've been waiting for him to come back. You know, and they they were uh, you know they're really excited that you you're back in town. 
Alhamdulillah. And, uh, and they're ready to support you and help you. And I was telling them, I said, look, you know, you might be happy he's here, but it's up to you guys to make sure he stays here. And, you know, you have to do <laughs> that by supporting shalom, him, shalom. you know, g giving him all the help he needs. Because, yeah. you know, once you've lived outside of the West, it's not easy to come back. Yeah. You know, and especially if the community are not supporting and, you know, so I was just like telling the brothers, like, look, you got to help him, you got to support him, you got to make sure, you know, he's got everything he needs, you know. Yeah, no, alhamdulillah, so, alhamdulillah. So we ask, can, uh, I, ask, I ask Allah subhanahu wa to, you know, to keep us sincere and amin, to amin. allow me to, to do whatever I can. And now, I mean, you know, we, we do, whatever we, do whatever we can to help out, you know. There are a lot yeah. of good brothers on the ground here, yeah. you know, brothers that are away, that are also yeah. studying, that inshallah will be coming back. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of khair, man, that, that, you know, a lot of potential for, good out here in this city in particular so alhamdulillah it's a small city you know yeah. cold in the winter but inshallah there's a lot of uh, definitely potential for goodness inshallah inshallah how many students would you say have returned this year from medina in, uh, this in, like, me, in canada in canada in canada yeah. uh i don't know there's a few but i i can't put a number to it to be honest yeah. but in few. ottawa it's just you and I mean, that came back now. There's yeah, other guys yeah. that will yeah, be coming, came, inshallah. This yeah. Year, yeah. yeah, this year, just me that came back. Yeah, but inshallah, in the, in the near future, there's, alhamdulillah, several brothers that are going to come back, inshallah. inshallah. So it's, it's, it's definitely going to be positive. So, before we finish, I want to, I want, what advice would you give to some of the young brothers? They want to they go and study, mm -hmm. you know, but they can't get in Medina. Yeah. A lot of them are kind of hanging on, waiting for Medina, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just not coming, like you. Yeah. You know, four or five times you're applying. Yeah. What should they be doing in the meantime, and what, what, how would you advise like a, a budding student, student of knowledge? I would say two things. Number one, uh, don't, don't stop your life in terms of, don't put your life in pause. Like continue what, what, what you ever, whatever you can do, whether it's study, whether it's work, whether it's saving up. Um, that's number one. So don't, don't stop your dunya, like mm. let that continue, you mm. know? As if, you know, that plan was not going to work out for you to go. But work towards it as much as you mm -hmm. can. Number two, I would say, uh, you got to do, be doing studying while you're here. Mm -hmm. That's very important. A lot of times, brothers would be waiting to, you know, for the dream to go to Medina, to go to Egypt, to go to, you know, wherever else you can go and study. And they're not really kind of taking the necessary steps to prepare yeah. themselves for that. You know, if you haven't memorized the Qur'an, start memorizing the Qur'an. You know, if you if you if you have memorized the Quran, then while you're mem or while you're memorizing the Quran, slowly you know begin learning your Arabic. You gotta strengthen mm -hmm. the Arabic and the, the as much as you can possibly do before getting there. Mm -hmm. It's to your own advantage because most of the brothers that benefited more when they're I mean most brothers that go out there, alhamdulillah, do benefit for the most part. But the brothers who already memorized the Quran, uh, who already kind of knew Arabic, they have tend to benefited much more from being there, from the scholars, from further study mm. over there than somebody who's going there from scratch yeah. and spending his whole two years in the Mahad just trying yeah. to pick up the language. And mm. so I think if you are really serious about trying to seek knowledge to go out there, you got to start now. Yeah. Like that's, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's not simply... It's so just give us a rundown, like on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. what should it look like for, you know, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, you know, maybe his... Uh, at university, what should he be doing in his daytime? He wakes up for Fajr, you know, uh, you know, just kind of give us an idea of what he should look like. Uh, of course, not yeah. someone who's a full time student of knowledge, like mm -hmm. you know, you're in Medina, yeah. but someone who, you know, they're kind of waiting to go and study. Yeah. You know, how much should they be doing daily? Again, it, it, it goes back down to the person. Yeah. And, and the, uh, the motivation the person has to really. To really study, some people can be in full-time school, university, but still have the motivation to put time yeah. every day in memorizing Quran, mm. right? But minimum, a day should not pass by where you're not reviewing the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. You you have to, yeah. you gotta review the Quran daily. Yeah. Uh, if you're memorizing, memorize, even if it's a small portion, even if it's mm. You know, half a page, two, three ayat. If you're at that level in the beginning, yeah. but you just gotta small but continuous. You just gotta do it. Mm. Uh, it's like, it's a fantasy if you say that. Hey, I just wanna, you know, the dream of going out and studying and then yeah. not doing nothing. It doesn't work yeah. that way. And most of the time, when you go out there, and that reality of the person is 
that where they haven't been doing anything, they get overwhelmed. Mm. It's, it's difficult. So it's, it's, it's a, a lot life. of people drop out, right? Yeah, but yeah, they do, but it's for different reasons. Sometimes drop mm. out, it's not necessarily because of them not being studious. People don't finish for different reasons. Health, you know, it's not easy living out there, man. It's not yeah. easy necessarily. People get homesick. You know, people have health issues. You know, people have to support their family and they can't stay there for long. Your family members get ill and they have to leave the jamia and yeah. make the sacrifice. So, I mean, people that don't finish university, it's not necessarily that. Yeah, that uh, they just couldn't do it. Some people that were actually left the university were extremely studious mm. and were serious students. But in Subhanallah, Allah put them, gave them certain tests mm. and certain circumstances that they couldn't continue and finish. Yeah. It was better for them to go back and, mm. and 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 deal with their own situation. So I think it's not it's not necessarily fair to generalize that. Mm. But the people do leave. But there yeah. are people that do drop up because it's just that's not their lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they had a certain perception of what it is being a student of knowledge, mm. but I guess they didn't really, it was, it was not the correct perception. So like I said, man, to that person who's aspiring and that really wants to go out there, now mm. do what you can. Do what yeah. you can. And actually the most important thing is make dua, man. Mm. I, think, I think that's something that we, we, we just forget. Make dua. SubhanAllah, that delay that you might be getting at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, might have better plans for you. Yeah. For, you know, maybe He wants you to do something at now so mm -hmm. that you can get in later. Yeah. Like what happened to me. So, yeah. or, or people have, you know, all yeah. the Medina brothers or brothers who study elsewhere you speak to have very unique stories about how they got there and what yeah. was their journey. And it's interesting and amazing. Yeah. So, I would just say for that brother, you know, continue what they have to do while they're, yeah. while they're at home. Uh, both with regards to studying the deen, memorizing the Quran, learning Arabic, learning their basic uh, understanding of aqidah and fiqh mm. and so on and so forth. And at the same time, continuing with their life in terms of, you know, whether it's you're studying in yeah, school yeah. or work yeah. or maybe working towards mm. traveling to go out there, yeah. saving up some money, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. So and, and continue in the meantime. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. opens that door for you, you, go. And at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you're sincere. Yeah, you know, I think sincerity is a, sincerity is a major, uh, yeah. major player in this situation That you just yeah. be sincere to Allah And you try your best And you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jazakallah right? khair bro Allah man Some nice insights there Jazakallah khair man It's really a pleasure khair. just spending time with you hearing yeah, your story man. man Likewise bro Jazakallah khair so, man So uh, inshallah Hopefully Hope it's we'll not your last time in Ottawa, man. No, inshallah. It's cold now. Come you know, back when it's like. Inshallah, I'm going to come in summer, inshallah. Inshallah, but man. I do. I like Canada. It's nice. I think there's a lot of potential here for Dawah. Yeah, for sure. You know, people are very open. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the students are very active, you know. Yeah. Organizing that event today in a couple of days. Alhamdulillah. You know, and it's full, you know. And, Alhamdulillah. And yeah, you know, I'm really excited. Alhamdulillah, so, uh, man. Happy to have you, man. Yeah. Happy to have you. Hopefully, see you soon, inshallah. inshallah. Habibi. Allah ya barakatuh. May Allah bless you. Thank 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 you.